So the last part of the titration curve we're going to look at is after the equivalence point. So let's imagine it's 26 milliliters. We've added one extra milliliter. So now we have excess EDTA that's going to be left behind, and that's going to be part of our equilibrium, right? So that's one of the reactants in our reaction equation, in our equilibrium that we're considering. So that excess EDTA is going to affect our equilibrium and lead to a decreased amount of metal ion. Uh, it'll shift our equilibrium to the right, even more to the complex. So the excess EDTA, we need to figure out how much of that there is. So we have one milliliter excess, uh, and we're going to need to divide that by our total volume of 76 milliliters. So this is our dilution factor, and that's going to be multiplied by our concentration of the EDTA that we're using in the titration. Uh, so this is sort of Right, so this comes from C1V1 equals C2V2. Uh, right, so our one milliliter of excess here times our 0.08 molar here, that's our moles of excess EDTA divided by the final volume of the solution. So this gives us a value of 1.05 times 10 to the minus three molar. Uh, we also need to know the value of our complex that's formed. So the amount of the complex hasn't changed at this point. Um, but the volume has changed a little bit. So we're gonna have a slightly different concentration than we calculated in the previous video. So we'll have our 0 0.040 molar initial concentration and our dilution factor just changes from 50 over 75 to 50 over 76. And that gives us a value of 2.63 times 10 to the minus two molar. Almost the same as what we had for uh, previously for the uh, at the equivalence point, but you know, slightly diluted. So again, our equilibrium here is governed by Kf prime, and so this is the equilibrium constant we care about: concentration of calcium y, sorry, y two minus divided by the concentration of calcium times concentration of EDTA. But we already know two of these values; they're just calculated right above. Because we have excess of both of these, these values are already known and are only unknown now is the calcium. Uh, so this is actually a really straightforward uh, calculation. We just plug in the values we just figured out. 2.63 times 7 minus 2 molar for the complex. Uh, calcium is X. And then our EDTA concentration is 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And again, our value of Kf prime is the same one that we calculated previously, 1.34 times 10 to the 10. And there's not even a quadratic involved here. We can just solve this for the concentration of calcium of 1.9 times 10 to the minus 9, meaning P calcium is 8.73. Right, so we see, again, a further decrease in the concentration of calcium ion in solution. Uh, and it's this change in, in the concentration of metal ion is how we can observe the equivalence point, right? That's what we take advantage of to find the endpoint. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about a couple of final things with EDTA titrations, namely how do we observe the endpoint and um, what do we do about these high pH values with metal ions uh, that can lead to some problems in terms of precipitation of these metal ions with hydroxide. And so we'll, we'll talk about what is done to prevent that.